What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. What I do here is I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a very practical level so that you can use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life by simply using your observation based on the things that I'm teaching on my channel, okay? Now, without further ado, let me give you a little bit of an understanding of who I am just so that you know who you're getting this information from, which is very important. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entire Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot, and I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in regards to astrology, okay? Now, without further ado, what is the topic of our today's video? The topic is going to be based on Elohim, okay, so if you've ever heard about the Elohim, that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video, and specifically, we're going to be talking about what is Elohimic programming, or what is the Elohim's big agenda on humanity, okay, and how have the Elohim been influencing the mass collective that we've been living in right now, okay? So if you want to know a little bit more about the Elohim and specifically their technology that they use to influence the spiritual state of the mass collective, then this is your video, so definitely make sure you stay tuned. Okay, so jumping right off the bat, I want to say this. What you're about to hear on this video, you probably never heard before, okay? If you have heard it before, you probably haven't heard it being said in the way that I'm about to say it, basically this direct and to the source of where it comes from. So there is definitely going to be a lot of hard truths to swallow within this video um, because it's not easy to accept the fact that we could potentially be living in a multiverse here on our planet Earth that is set up to literally farm energy from human beings, okay? So here's the red pill. Now you can take it, okay? Now let's go right into it. So. The reality is, is there is this Elohimic technology being used every single day, and this has been going on for a very long time now. This has actually been going on dating back to the uh, John D. and Edward Kelly working for the royal family at the time. So this is about 600 years ago that this has been very uh, prominent within our multiverse and how the Elohim have been energetically influencing uh, our multiverse. So let's start with this. What exactly is the Elohim? Now I'm going to make an entire video on the Elohim um, so that people can watch it and really understand, but in a very basic nutshell, what the Elohim are, you could think of them as literally being another species of beings that exist in their own a galaxy, have their own planets. They are not physical like we are. Um, they're more, they are more astral than we are. They are extraterrestrial in nature. Uh, they have high levels of interdimensional technology that we do not have access to or that we don't fully understand. Um, so with that being said, they are very skilled in the astral sciences, okay? So this species known as the Elohim are trying to harvest human source energy because from the human being, we do have this, um, this source aspect within ourselves, which is directly connected to the fact that we are physical 
We are as physical as it gets, living on the most physical planet, but also we have an astral body, which makes us unique compared to any other species that exists. We have the ability to love and hate at the exact same time, and we are completely solid, yet we are completely astral at the exact same time. We have a soul and a spirit, um, a physical body, and an astral body. Okay, bioplasmic and soul fluid. That is what makes us very unique, and that is something that a lot of uh, interdimensional or extraterrestrial predators will definitely want to take from us or um, try to trick us out of being aware that we have these uh, unique components to our being so that they can harvest it from us. Okay, um, so specifically, what it does for them for these Elohimic extraterrestrial beings is it makes their reality more solid. Okay, that's in a nutshell what it's doing for them. That's why they want it. It makes their realities more solid and less chaotic. Okay, so putting all that aside, we're not going to be really speaking in depth about exactly what the Elohim are. Rather, we're going to be talking about how it influences the world that we live in today because it 100% is having a huge influence on the world that we live in. And once I start explaining some of the primary concepts of this Elohimic programming, you're going to start seeing it. Okay? Um, so now that we understand it is extraterrestrial and it is interdimensional in nature, let's start talking about how it's coming about in our day-to-day -day lives. Okay? So Elohim. In our world here on earth, we, we see the word, word Elohim uh, in the dictionary translated to meaning the powerful ones. Okay, once again, now that we have this understanding that this is an interdimensional extraterrestrial force that is actually trying to harvest human uh, potential, human energy, um, when you hear Elohim, you can now connect it to something being uh, something that is not looking out for your best interest. Okay. Once again, the Elohim are trying to steal the human potential. Okay. By causing mass chaos on our planet. So, of course, if they're trying to disguise themselves as a beneficial entity or spirit, they're going to present themselves to magicians, occultists, psychics, anyone that knows how to communicate with that other dimension or what's known as the astral plane, they're going to present themselves as helpful beings, beings that want to save the planet or want to save you. And they're going to make you feel special because they're choosing you to be their vessel to save the planet. Okay. Um, so what are a couple forms or what are the primary forms that these Elohimic interdimensional forces show up as? Well, one of the primary forms they showed up as dating back to John D and Edward Kelly were the Enochian angels. Okay, so if you study a little bit about the history of John D and Edward Kelly, who were some of the most primary occult influences dating up to our time now in regards to all the different occult orders like the Golden Dawn, the OTO, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the Knights Templars, so forth, so forth, etc., etc., uh, you'll notice that John D. and Edward Kelly were in communion with Enochian angels, and they didn't fully understand exactly what these beings were, other than the fact that these beings were telling them that they're good, and that they're being chosen as the vessels to use that Enochian angel technology. Okay, So long story short, what John D. and Edward Kelly were really communicating with were these interdimensional forces that we call the Elohim, the powerful ones, 
and the Elohim were possessing John D and Edward Kelly to basically manifest the multiverse of the Elohim. So John D and Edward Kelly were doing the work of interdimensional beings that were actually trying to install a multiverse that was chaotic in nature, inverted in nature, so that the human population or the human species would live in a state of default chaos. So that this Elohimic species can harvest energy very easily from our planet and from our species. Okay, so once again, one of the main forms that these Elohim came down into to begin communicating with our species was the Enochian angels, okay? So we also notice that the Elohim have a very large influence on the royal families. Once again, dating it back to John D and Edward Kelly that were using Enochian magic, talking to the Enochian angels under the scope and the influence of the royal families who were paying them to manifest a reality that they were wanting and intending to manifest. So we can see that this Elohimic species was influencing the royal family at the time. Okay. And in today's time, right now in the present moment, we can see that the Elohim have currently been the royal family still, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the inner Sanhedrin Jewish rabbis. And the reason why I know this is because they're the ones controlling the economy, or at least they have been controlling the economy. Not, not anymore. Things are definitely changing and they're shifting drastically right now. Ever since the pandemic came out, that was signs that there are some major changes taking place to our multiverse, but we'll leave that for another time. But the Elohim have been influencing, or you could say possessing, these groups of people that I just mentioned um, to further influence our multiverse to be inverted and chaotic in nature. I mean, do I need to explain how that's come about? Do I, do I really need to go into that? I mean, can you look out your window? Can you walk to your nearest public area? You know, find yourself around other people um, observe the things they're saying, observe the behaviors they have, uh, observe what they're intending and, and what they're, uh, what they're trying to be, right? You, you simply can go outside to a public area and you can obviously tell that we live in a chaotic multiverse. There are people that are so far gone from the awareness of their highest potential. And this only happens uh, during certain phases of evolution, specifically called the Kali Yuga, where the human species is the farthest they can be away from uh, that source aspect of themselves. Uh, they're the farthest away from the understanding or the awareness that they are an aspect of the source. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not making progress. We definitely are. We are we're moving upwards. You could think of it like when you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere else to go. You can only go up. So that's where we're at. We're going up, but we're still in that rock bottom area, okay? So, when it comes to these Elohim and the way that they use some of the wealthiest people on the planet, uh, the ones that have been printing money, um, of course the Elohim is going to target those people first because they're the ones that have their hand in the economy. And if you have your hand in the economy and can control the economy, uh, you can obviously pump programming into the mass collective. You can pump influence into the mass collective. Why? Because you can own the music industry. You can own the movie industry. You can own the TV industry. You can own any industry you want. And obviously, who is consuming those industries? The mass collective. So if you understand higher level science, aka the occult, 
you can embed occult symbolism within these industries, pumping them out to the mass collective, causing a global day-to-day -day ritual that is programming what people think and how they think and why they think what they think, which produces their physical realities to manifest. Now with Elohimic technology, once again, the idea behind Elohimic programming is to primarily invert and cause chaos. Okay. So let me explain this first part. So when I say invert, what do I mean by that? This can manifest in a couple ways. So one of the ways that this inversion can take place is disguising the masculine energy, the male force, and disguising the female energy, the feminine force, and inverting them in each race. Meaning you take a woman who is predominantly feminine in nature, biologically speaking, she was created like that, and you program her to want to be more masculine. And to not only want to, but to feel like she needs to be more masculine to survive. Okay? And then vice versa with the male, you take a male who is predominantly masculine in nature, okay? Biologically, he has the ability to fight off enemies to protect him and his loved ones uh, physically. being a male, <laughs> you take that and you program the male to say, I should be ashamed of my ability to protect. I should be ashamed of my ability to be dangerous physically to those that are enemies to my loved ones. Rather, you take this male figure and you train him that the woman is the leader. That the woman is the one that you should bow down to and basically serve as a master. Okay? Now, obviously, these are intense words that I'm using. These are powerful words that I'm using. But when you look in the world today, you see a lot of men who are supposed to be natural leaders by their birth, you see a lot of men sacrificing their awareness of being that leader and rather they're chasing women because they have no control over their sexual energy, meaning they're lusting for attractive women that these women are not prepared to be leaders, okay? The women, biologically speaking, are prepared to be receptive and are prepared to nurture, which is the highest power within the feminine current, which is the mother, the dark mother energy, which is truly the ability to control and rule the unconscious and the subconscious realm. That's the power of the woman. Now, the power of the man, biologically speaking, is to have will force, to create willpower, to bring order to certain chaos, to then create something physical. Now, when you once again, when you have a man that doesn't know how to control his sexual energy, and he's now lusting after a woman, and now, from that lust, this man cannot lead this woman because he's now looking to her, trying to please her so that he can have a sexual interaction. Okay? So, this is a resultant of inverting a masculine energy with a feminine energy, biologically speaking, Switching them over, okay? This is one manifestation, okay? And I'm speaking here in generalizations, 
Okay, I'm not saying that if you're a woman, you act like that. I'm not saying if you're a man, you act like that. I'm saying the majority of the mass collective is operating on this inverted program. Okay, and this is just a fact. You don't need to agree with me for me to know this is a fact. I've studied it. I've observed it. It's real. And I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this will also see the same thing. Okay, so when you can take a man and a woman and shift them or program them to be out of touch with their own biological nature, now you're producing a reality that is going to naturally be chaotic. It's like taking a pilot and then taking someone who drives cruise ships and telling the one who drives the cruise ships full of hundreds of people, it's like telling that guy to fly a plane when he has never done that before and has no experience. And it's like telling the pilot who flies planes to now get behind the wheel of a ship that is carrying thousands of people on it when he's never driven a ship before or sailed in his life. Obviously, what do you think that will produce? some form of chaos. Um, so that's what's going on. That's one inversion. Now let's look at another common inversion that we see in the movie industry, we see in the music industry, we see in all the industries around us. It's basically disguising the force of good as evil. And then vice versa, disguising the force of evil as good. So let me explain a little bit more about what I'm saying. When you see these movies and these TV shows and these music videos that are describing, oftentimes it's going to show up in movies, that are having this person saving the world. I'm going to save the world. You most of the time is most of the times it's some sort of man. I'm going to save the world even if that means I'm going to die. And usually the person does die. And I'll explain that in a second. But you have somebody that's saving the world or a group of people that are saving the world, similar to a Jesus Christ. And then you have a bad guy or a bad woman or whatever, a bad person, an evil person that's trying to destroy the world. Okay. So what's going on here is you have a good person and you have a bad person. Now remember, the Elohimic technology is based on uh, excuse me, disguising the force of good as evil, and the force of evil as good. So you have this hero that's trying to save the world, but little does everyone know that the world that this hero is trying to save is the world we're currently living in, which is naturally inverted. So by definition, saving the world is only going to continue to keep this one that we're living in the exact same, which is chaotic already. So we're not getting to the root of the chaos, we're just solidifying the chaotic multiverse. That's why every single movie we see is programmed with this Elohimic technology. Now let me give you a little more clarity on how this technology functions. Specifically, to be able to keep the chaotic multiverse in place, you need a sacrifice. You need what's known in the occult field as a good shepherd or a wicker man. Somebody who has the ability to touch the source for a short amount of time and then immediately gets pulled down and is literally sacrificed which means physically or spiritually or both dies so I want you to think for a second if you've ever watched a movie where there was a concept of a man who is trying to save the world from a bad guy trying to destroy the world and the man in the process of saving the world dies that would be your wicker man. That would be your good shepherd. So what movies does this manifest in? 
Well, we can see how that manifests in the new James Bond movie. Little spoiler alert, excuse me. Uh, we can see how that manifests in the Suicide Squad number two movie with the guy that's wearing the yellow suit who gets killed by John Cena. Remember, he was trying to expose all the corruption, but then John Cena kills him. Um, we can see it with Neo, who is willing to sacrifice his life to save the Matrix. Um, we can see it in a whole host of movies. Whole host. Iron Man. All of them. Okay? This is a common reoccurrence because this is Elohimic technology. Okay? So, you need sacrifices. People that are trying to save the world. That are touching source. That evolutionary point. But then what happens is... Because that person that's trying to save the world, what they don't understand is that the world we live in is so chaotic, there is no saving it. So what happens is that that person gets pulled down by chaos, by the Elohim, and then they get basically spiritually slapped in the face, which causes them to either physically or spiritually or both actually die. Okay, now when that happens, all the energy that came from that good shepherd or that wicker man, it goes to the source of the chaotic entity that caused them to be that wicker man. So when that person dies, all that energy goes into the multiverse that's structured in the inverted way. So it strengthens the chaotic multiverse. That's why all the movies are based on that ritualistic Elohimic technology of having a wicker man who is the good guy, who's actually the bad guy trying to save the world. And then you have the bad guy trying to destroy it, who's actually the good guy who recognizes this world is not going to be saved. You can't save the world. You have to destroy the corruption, destroy what's been built to then rebuild something new and something under the scale of evolution. That's the only way you can do it. Okay? Um, it's like you take a knife and you stab it in your stomach. You can't look at the knife take your hand off of it and look at it and say, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save myself with the knife still in my stomach. I'm going to figure out how to save myself. I'm going to send this gash in my stomach, love and lights, and I'm going to save this wound on my body by looking at it and putting all my soul's energy into it and save myself. You're not going to save yourself. You're most likely going to die. You're going to bleed out. So the first step you need to do is take that knife and pull it out and remove it. And then go through the process of taking care of your wound. Okay? So that is the main concept behind this Elohimic technology where it's inverting everything. And that's also why, excuse me, I'm going to come up real quick, on this Kabbalistic tree, you see the pillars. Let me make sure it zooms in. You see these pillars, a dark pillar and a light pillar, the feminine and the masculine. That's why they're inverted. You may ask right now, what, what do you mean? How, do, how are they inverted? I don't understand that. You're looking at me face to face. This is my left hand and you're looking at the tree and this is the left pillar. Why is the left pillar where my right hand would be? This is my right hand. This is the left pillar. This is my right hand. This is showing that you're not looking at the front of the tree. You're looking at the back of the tree. And the back of this tree is demonic. It's dark. And trust me, I'm studied and I'm very skilled with the back of this tree. I work with it. I use it daily. I exist in it. 
So trust me when I tell you that. Now, if you don't understand this structure and you don't understand the different facets that go behind this tree, then it sounds like there is a system that I could potentially torture you with because I know about this tree and you don't. So what if I got you into the demonic areas within this tree that is a part of your being, as you can see, it's the DNA strand, but because you don't know that and because you live in a world that's promoting chaos, which is not allowing you to become aware of this system, then I can use this system on you and do what I want with you so that I can stay in power and you can suffer for my power, okay? And this is the basis of Elohimic technology. Once again, it's based on inversions. And the main concept behind it is to produce mass chaos because it's this other interdimensional species that does not give a fuck about the human species. They just want our um, source energy. They want our ability to make things real and solid that we do here on this planet all the time, living on the physical plane, they want that physical energy from us. They want that to make themselves and their species more real. So that's exactly what the Elohim are. And they do show up in every industry. This technology that I'm explaining will show up in every single industry. And it shows up over and over and over again. And it constructs itself in different ways every time. Just very subtle changes every time. Sometimes they're the exact same. So what I'm saying is that you will always see this concept of somebody who is representing a wicker man who will end up trying to save something, someone, or the world that will end up getting killed, sacrificed. And then from that, the bad guy is stopped. The, the, evil, the, the, the evil guy can no longer do what he's doing or do what she's doing. They're stopped. They're halted. And then the world is great. The world's wonderful. Everything is saved. And that's the Elohimic technology. They need sacrifices that are very similar to the religion of Christianity, just like Jesus trying to save his fellow man and then ends up getting crucified and losing everything with the promise that he'll live eternally in the afterlife. But if you ask me, that's a, uh, what's the word for it? A long con. Okay. I mean, if you don't want to believe me, you can find out yourself once you pass. But that's the idea. The idea is you need sacrifices for Elohimic technology to strengthen the multiverse that is inverted because the person that is the sacrifice, what they're doing is they're going from the center of the tree as the wicker man, the good shepherd, and they're going up to the top trying to save the world and they're touching source and then what chaos does is it pulls them right back down into death death and then they get sucked in to the demonic realms and tortured and lose everything everything good and a lot of times their physical life and then all that energy that was sucked out of them all the source energy that they were able to access, that source energy goes into the chaotic multiverse and everything good goes into the chaos entities that got that good shepherd in the first place, that led that person to thinking that they could save the world and that they should save the world. That is Elohimic technology. It's all inverted. Once again, 
You take the masculine and the feminine and switch it over. You confuse people away from their biology. You confuse people away from who they truly are to produce, by default, chaos in the environment. And the more people that are infected with Elohimic technology, obviously that will spread and make everything more chaotic. The more chaotic things are, the easier it is for chaotic entities to feed off of the source. To feed off of people that have that source potential that are trying to access it. And then those chaos entities can attack and pull those people that have that potential down into the demonic realms where then they're tortured even worse and to a higher degree. Okay, Even though the person had the best intentions, they still didn't understand that they cannot save this world. You're not supposed to save this world. The key is to become a black brother or a black sister, go into the realms of chaos, go into the underworld, and gain the power from these chaos entities to then reprogram them to attack the people that have been using this Elohimic technology that have been possessed by the Elohim themselves. Because when you use the power of Universe B, the Klebothic realm, the tunnels of Set, and you direct that power on the people that have been creating an inverted multiverse, the Elohim, then what you're doing is you're uninverting the inversion. You're swapping back over the pillars. Because when you destroy the main avatars of the Elohim, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the inner Sanhedrin Jews, the royal families, when you're eliminating them, they no longer are carrying that Elohimic influence because they have no physical body to do that. So the key is to take over these Klipothic Universe B realms properly, which is not easy, but that is the key, and then to change the Wicker Man and make the new Wicker Man, the new Good Shepherd, the chaotic entities that are influenced by the Elohim. So now chaos suffers, chaos gets tortured, whoever is an avatar of chaos with no evolutionary perspective, no evolutionary potential because they've sold themselves to the chaos multiverse or the chaotic entity. Instead, you torture them and they suffer to provide power and source energy to the beings that are on that evolutionary journey to achieve their highest potential of the source within, which is going to be the black brothers and the black sisters, the vampires. Okay, we're the ones going into these dark matter energy realms. We're not afraid of death. We're not afraid of dark matter energy. We embrace it, but we embrace it to evolve. And we know that the planet needs to evolve at the same time. And the more we evolve, the more the planet is able to evolve at the same time. Okay? And that's what we're doing. Okay. So that's exactly what the Elohimic technology is. I'm going to leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, if you feel like it offered you a lot of value, then definitely hit that thumbs up. Okay, definitely make sure you hit a thumbs up. Also, come down here and hit that notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And obviously, you do not want to miss out. There are a lot of things that I speak about that a lot of people do not know about. This is very high level information. So if you're smart, go ahead and hit that notification bell so that when I'm releasing content, you are notified. Okay. Also go right next to that and hit the subscribe button because 
Uh, I love to see my subscribers go through the roof and you know, I'm just trying to build up my uh, empire. So go ahead and add into that. Okay, simply, if you're not subscribed and you're watching this or you continuously watch my videos and you're not subscribed, why are you even here? Okay, so go ahead and subscribe. Um, now, the first thing that I would like to draw your awareness to is to my Patreon. Okay, now on my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive content that is not on my YouTube channel. That vault consists of actual practices that I perform on camera and I teach you how to do that are occult, fundamental practices. It includes information on the Kabbalistic tree that I've been explaining uh, throughout my channel that is literally based on the entire initiatory process and journey that you have to go through. I break down all the spheres. Um, I have live streams that I do on YouTube that don't get uploaded to my public channel, but to my Patreon. Okay. Uh, all the way up to a magic training course that gives you step-by-step -step instructions to follow if you're a beginner to develop a cult power. Okay. Very valuable. And then I have a service that I perform for you as a top tier member, tier four, that I call the vampire service which is a service that I perform on the 29th of every month, which is coming up in this month. And I permanently change your energy field to be more receptive, vampiric in nature, so that you're constantly pulling energy in from chaos in your environment, which is gradually increasing your power and aiding in your ability to achieve your highest potential, okay? So I'm going to leave that there. If you are interested in any of the things that I just mentioned, then your best bet is to look into the Patreon. There are four tiers. Okay. The, the link for the Patreon is going to be the very first link in the description. Okay. And with that being said, I would love to give a special shout out to all of the Patreon members who specifically are the top tier vampire service members. I have all of their names that are linked in the description that is directly below that Patreon link. Okay, they're all in parentheses. So, specifically, huge shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your practices to the other side. Okay, now I'd like to give a second shout out to all of my Patreon members in general. I highly appreciate all of you. You're all wonderful, and I appreciate the fact that you take your knowledge, your studies, and your practices to that next level as well. Huge shout out. Now, a third shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers, I appreciate you all for being here and really taking in this information because obviously the information is not public. It's not what your friends are talking about. It's not what most people you've ever heard are talking about, which by nature is uh, not easy information to really integrate. But if you do integrate it, my promise is it will forever change your life in a way that is going to be beneficial. So huge shout out to all of you specifically who are subscribed to the YouTube channel, okay? Now, the second thing I would like to take your awareness to is where you can book a tarot card reading with me. Where you can book it is the second link in my YouTube description. It says square up appointments, in parentheses book now. And what I can do is I can literally locate where you are on this Kabbalistic tree doing a tarot card reading for you that is individually done on video for you and then sent to you through WhatsApp so that once you receive the reading, it is a permanent reading and you can look over it as many times as you need and I can pinpoint exactly where you are on this tree and what to expect in your near and long-term future, okay, and give you advice in regards to what the cards are saying for you. So once again, I've done over a hundred readings so far. And for every single one, I've literally been able to pinpoint exactly where people are located on this tree. So it's a very valuable reading if you want to get a general foundational understanding of where you are on your occult journey right now. Now, as you can see, this is the DNA strand. And the reason why it's set up in that way is because it runs through your blood. So you don't even need to know about this tree to be located somewhere on it. Once again, I've done over a hundred readings and every single person is somewhere on this tree. 
okay? So that's what I'm gonna say to that. If you want to book that appointment, check out the second link below, okay? Now the third link in my YouTube description is where you can become a YouTube member. Now as you're a YouTube member, you're gonna gain access to exclusive emojis that are specifically designed to be used in a psychic warfare way. Simply, you can type out a certain sequence of emojis that I teach you how to do, in parentheses put a person's name that you would consider an enemy, and hit enter, and it will calculate into my community post that I have for the YouTube members, which is uh, basically an online dungeon, and it will actually find the target that you placed in the parentheses and cause actual energetic damage to that target. Okay, I have an entire YouTube video that explains how this psychic warfare program functions, and it tells you exactly how to use it. And the YouTube video is in parentheses called YouTube Members followed by Psychic Warfare Program. So if you wanna know a little bit more about it, go and watch that YouTube uh, video that I have on my channel. Um, but yes, long story short, it is very valuable. It really does work. There's over 20 members of the YouTube membership that are using it right now. People are using it every single day. And the more people that use it, the more powerful it becomes, okay? That's all I'm gonna say to that. And I've ritualistically designed it to be very effective, okay? Myself. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing you gain access to as a YouTube member. You also gain access to your name appearing in green every time I do my live streams. So I'm gonna be giving you a personal shout out every time I see your name. And every single month you have access to leaving a free question on my live streams. Okay, so that's another thing. Uh, other than that, everyone, I'm going to leave it here. So I just want to say, once again, I appreciate all of you. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. Later.